We're here at a customer's home today. They gave us a call. Uh, we are expecting some mild storms this afternoon, and uh, they came out to clean their storm shelter, and they could not get the door open. So uh, they called us. They wanted us to come take a look and see what the problem is, see if we could help them out, and uh, get their storm shelter repaired before the storms this afternoon. So come take a look, and you can see what we have here is we have an in-ground, in-the-garage storm shelter with a sliding door. And the problem is, is that this, this handle is what releases the door, but there's so much tension on the door, that's about as far as we can open it. That's as far as the door will get. Now there's several reasons why this could happen. It could, it could have happened because uh, of driving over the shelter. It could have um, warped the top of the shelter. Uh, also, as uh, debris gets in these tracks, that can also prevent it from opening up. If your tracks are not properly greased and maintained, that can prevent it. Um, but what we realize is that the, the tension on these bolts uh, is causing some pressure uh, to prevent this door from opening. So, if we release some of the tension on these bolts, Now, we can get the door opened all the way. Now, right off the bat, I can see a lot of debris inside the track here. So right inside this track, uh, there's a lot of debris that could prevent this door from, from gliding. And if I look down in here, it's kind of hard to see, but I can see that the side of this door is rubbing inside of this track. And so whenever this bolt is tight, it causes pressure on that sliding door and it causes it to rub the sidewall. So what we're going to do today is we are going to remove the sliding door, we're going to reinforce it uh, with some angle iron welded in place so that it is braced properly, it's stronger, it doesn't flex, and we're going to trim the edges of this door so that it will glide inside the track properly. Then we're going to come back, we're going to uh, get all the debris out of the track and we're going to properly grease all the bearings inside of this uh, shelter track. So this should only take us about uh, three to four hours to get this completed and we are going to have this door back on by the end of the day and ready to go before the storms hit later on tonight. Okay we've got the top of this shelter off. The top of the shelter is built out of quarter inch plate. Uh, quarter inch plate is what FEMA requires for this style shelter, the in ground, in the garage type shelter. Uh, but if you do not brace this plate, even though quarter inch is very thick, uh, it still will flex, especially if you're driving vehicles over it. So you can see that there is some warpage on this plate here. Uh, that warpage does come out when it gets bolted uh, to the concrete or to the, uh, to the anchor points here. But you can see even quarter inch plate will warp if not properly braced. Now, now that we got the top of that off, we can take a look at the sliding door and we can see exactly what the problem is. This door here, you can see it glides on these tracks and when there is pressure uh, bolted down to these anchoring points, it causes uh, the sidewall to flex. You can see the sidewall is not very thick and so with that amount of pressure on it, it can flex and this door is stopping right here. You can see where this wear point is and this wear point is exactly on top of this bolting anchor. So if you look from up top, you can see how this side of the door has bowed out or this side of the track has bowed out. So when we pull the door in place, it wants to catch right here. So what we are going to do is we are going to straighten this section back out. We're going to trim this door back about an eighth inch on both sides. We're going to add some track uh, guides to prevent the door from moving uh, from either side of this track. And then we're going to brace the entire door underneath.
Okay, now we're gonna trim up this edge here. Um, you can tell somebody came out and tried to uh, adjust the edge. They didn't cut it uh, very straight. Um, so we've got this straight edge clamped on and we're gonna use a plasma cutter to cut about an eighth inch off the side of this door and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we've got this thing fully welded up and braced. We got this H brace in here that we uh, did with quarter inch angle iron. That's gonna support it uh, length and width ways. It's gonna keep this quarter inch plate from flexing. And we also welded in these guide uh, rails right here. And what this is going to do is prevent, um, what they were doing earlier was, was they were using the side of the door to guide it. Uh, in the tracks and instead of using the side of the door we're going to use these uh, clips that we welded on here to guide it on the outside of the track versus the inside of the track so if something uh, gets clogged up or dirt debris gets inside of the track um, it will prevent it from opening that way with this there's nothing for um, there's no debris that can get caught uh, on the inside or the outside of the track so this is going to free up uh, this door to be able to slide a lot better so that is it this thing is pretty much ready to go and we are going to uh, head out and get this thing installed back on the shelter for the customer uh, before the storms hit tonight This shelter repair is complete. Uh, all that's left to do is to repaint it. Um, the customer didn't want to wait for the paint to dry. Uh, they wanted it in tonight. So you can see that the welds have penetrated through this quarter inch plate. That's actually a good sign. That means that they're, um, they're good welds, they're solid, and they're gonna hold in place for